watching Amitha Verma. Guess what time it is? Paint furniture makeover time. It's been a while and I wanted to stop and pause and share a really cute little project I'm working on to hopefully inspire you if you have not tried this kind of a project yet or re-inspire you if you haven't painted a piece of furniture or object in your home in a while. So we were working on a room vignette and we have this one piece of furniture that just is really sticking out like a sore thumb. It's kind of in bad shape, not good, not bad, but it not fitting into the color scheme really pushed us over or pushed me over into the edge of taking on a quick furniture makeover. The room we're working in, as you can see behind me, is filled with all of these really beautiful blues, this gorgeous denim color, grays, and some cream tones, and the original black color of this little nightstand was just not feeling very harmonious in this space. The overall look and feel that we're going for is very calm and very soothing. And so instead of looking for a new piece of furniture, which I know so many of us, including me, often turn to or feel like when we see this sore thumb in our house. I knew this was a great piece for an Amitha Verma chalk finish paint makeover. So once a client of ours figures out how to use our paint, which is super simple, I almost say it's therapeutic because you just get into the zone, the next hardest thing can be how do you know which is the right paint color to select? So how I selected the color is by looking around this area of where I'm going to put my piece of furniture. And once I did that, I could see how all of these different hues influence my choices and it immediately took all of the options down to just two colors. I was debating between French gray and Belgian blue, both very gorgeous, timeless colors that are going to be around forever. And it helped eliminate all of that overwhelming, stressful feeling of which color should I use. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give this piece a good cleaning. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite tools. This is a soft cotton cloth. It's like t-shirt material. You can easily pull it out of someone else's t-shirt drawer to use it to go ahead and take the dust off just as simply as this. And then in one more application, I'm gonna use a little bit of mineral spirits because I'm working with an older piece. So I wanna make sure I get off any grease or grime that might've built up on this piece over the years. Now that that's done, I want to go ahead and put a little bit of blue tape around this really beautiful antique brass arcade detail that's around this little nightstand and on some of these little details right here because I actually do not want to paint over this part of this piece of furniture. This is such a beautiful old gold and it's going to really enhance my project when I'm done. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to wrap it up with blue tape so I don't get any paint on it. Now that I'm ready to start painting, I've gone ahead and gathered up my supplies. I'm using Amita Verma Chalk Finish Paint in Belgian Blue. And whenever I'm painting, I tend to keep a couple of different size Amita Verma paint brushes so I can paint over all the different sides and pieces of the furniture project that I'm working on. The larger one, obviously, to cover larger areas, but then also a smaller one to start getting into these smaller details. Now that I'm gonna start painting, I'm gonna use my two inch Amitha Verma chalk finish paintbrush. This is my favorite size for most of the projects that I work on. I'm gonna load it up with the Belgian blue. And I'm gonna start in one corner and I'm gonna use long continuous strokes as I paint the piece of furniture. You, I wanna recommend that you generally follow the wood grain and if you look at this piece of furniture, it's very dark. You may not be able to see where the wood grain is. So I'm just using logic to create a direction. So in this instance, I'm gonna use a vertical brush stroke and then across the front, I'm gonna switch over to a horizontal brush stroke. In your first coat, you really just wanna get the coverage. You're not gonna get a perfect application on your first coat. It's almost like putting nail polish on. You need that first coat and then you go back and use the top coat to really finish up your project. And I'm twisting my brush around to make sure I get the paint into all these little grooves and crevices. Now you can see why I love this little one so much. And if you are just one of those people that every detail needs to be covered, this brush is your best friend. So 
So I'm using my smaller brush just to get this edge so I don't get it all over this really beautiful antique brass detail. My long continuous strokes because this is a long vertical piece and then I'm gonna switch to horizontal. Just one second. Okay, and then we're gonna switch over here to horizontal. A little bit outside the lines, just use my soft cotton cloth to try and clean that up a little bit. So whenever I'm working on a spindle, I like to use kind of a quick back and forth movement just like this to get that coverage. And then I'll go back and do a little vertical coat to, to align with the direction of the wood. A spindle or a rounded leg, turned leg, anything in that category. Okay, I know it doesn't look done, but we're gonna keep on moving on. And then my dad would say, keep on moving on. We're gonna keep on moving on so that way we can go ahead and get everything covered with our first coat of paint. I know it looks like a mess and it sometimes does feel like it's gonna be worse before it's better, but it's really that second coat where we're gonna make it perfect and beautiful. So a frequently asked question that I often get is, should you or should you not paint the inside of your piece of furniture? I typically do not paint the insides of whatever I'm working on. Whenever you're looking for an antique, you don't wanna paint over the inside because you won't be able to tell the type of construction that was used to put the piece together. Now, if you don't care about that, and that means nothing, and you wanna see a really beautiful contrast color from the inside and the outside, go ahead and paint it. Whatever goes with your home is truly the best answer. So now that the first coat is dry, I am ready to go ahead and add a second coat of paint onto this piece. And here you can see just how beautifully this piece has turned out after we have done our second coat of paint. I am ready to move on to the next step, which is gonna to be to put our clear top coat onto this piece. Before I do that, I'll go ahead and remove my blue tape. And if you take a look here, you might see a couple of little rough spots. Those are super easy to touch up. You can just use a little sandpaper, smooth it out, and then use the detail brush like I was using before to just hit those little spots once more. Now that the paint is fully applied and completely dry, I'm gonna apply our Protect Clear Sealer on top of this piece as step two. It sounds a little contradictory because I know you might be wondering about the antiquing glaze, but that is also a top coat, so I save that for my last and final step. Now, as I apply the product here, you can take a look at how it looks. It's got this really nice, thick consistency that's super easy to work with. I am gonna apply a very thin film maybe the amount of uh, lip balm or chapstick you might use. So I'll use our Amitha Verma Protect Crush. I'm gonna dip it in and get my bristles nice and covered. So here you can see it's a very light application. And then I'm just gonna start using that back and forth motion to apply it onto my piece. So as I was smoothing out some of these rough spots, I inadvertently ended up distressing my piece a little bit. And I have to tell you, I kind of like it. So I am going to use my sandpaper and just remove a little bit more to give it a little bit more of an older aged look. Now I'm not gonna do a lot and that's probably my biggest advice I can give you. A little bit goes a long, long, long way. 
I'm not gonna do any on the top because I love this perfectly painted finish. I'm just gonna do a little bit more around the drawers because those would have naturally gotten a little bit more wear and tear, and then maybe a little bit on the sides. Now that our clear sealer is dry, I'm gonna move on to the last and final step. And other than the painting, this is actually one of my favorite parts because this is where I can really add some of that artistry into my piece. I am going to apply our Amitha Verma Antiquing Glaze onto this piece just to give it a little bit more depth and character. And if it's too much, it's out of control, use your soft cotton cloth, wipe up a little bit, and then keep on trucking. Now, once my first application has gone on, I'm gonna let this dry for just a few minutes so I'm not just moving it around with my brush, the glaze that is, and in about 10, 20 minutes, once I'm done with my entire first coat, I'll go back and add a little bit more antiquing glaze where this piece would naturally age. So for instance, in this piece, that might be here under these moldings, around these little drawer pulls, maybe somewhere in the grooves and crevices where dirt would have just naturally accumulated. That's my strategy on where to add more. Here you can see how beautifully the Belgian blue just blends into this gorgeous room that we're working on. I love how this antique brass detail was still kept intact and you have some of that old soul still in this beautiful piece of furniture. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know what do you think about this furniture makeover. And if you've done a makeover using Amitha Verma Chalk Finish Paint, please share some before and after pictures in the comments below. Myself and my team, all of us would love to see them and cheer on your success. If you're not able to upload your photos in the comments, email them to us and we will be happy to share it all over our social media. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and when you're done, subscribe to this channel. And then after that, head over to our website where you can receive more amazing design tips. We share everything from how to make over a piece of furniture to how to make over your whole house. Till the next time we meet, keep making your home amazing with your design gifts. This is probably as clean as this piece has ever been. So I'm going to use my two-inch Amitha Verma chalk finish paint brush. I typically do not paint the pieces on the inside, and I think it comes from all my years of just working with an antique. Whenever you would look for an antique piece, my little son, he's like, Mommy, you have to show that, otherwise people don't get satisfaction. He's like, Google that. Are you learning? No, no, I'm just doing a little video so we can put it on the YouTube. Okay. Like a tutorial.